Yeah, With a whole bunch of uh, footballers talking bullshit on the TV at the moment, we'll uh, we'll move on. So this is the Immaterial Gamers podcast. Hello, everyone. Greetings. Hello. So uh, yeah, I haven't thought of of anything that we are this week. So um, you know what? We got Ryan, we got Duncan, and we got Martin, my flatmate. And uh, you know, Mister Mister Behind the. Thank you. Yeah, Mister Mister Behind the Scenes usually. But uh, yeah, trying something a little bit different and uh, looking at random. Is that a is that a radiator bleeding key? Yeah. Is that a radiator? Where it was? Yeah, I was about to say, is that radiator bleeding key that we've been looking for for ever? Yeah, that's been stuck to the side of the fire the entire time. Ah, oh, wonderful! The magic of household appliances, eh, Duncan? Yeah, I I know because I'm definitely there and can see what you're talking about. Yeah, so yeah. radiator. You've got radiator bleeding keys, yeah? I don't even know what that means. Okay, so it's a little it's a little key that you use to drain the fluid from your radiators yeah also I, live as... a, I, I live in an apartment so I, don't, I just, we just have like a centralized heating system for the whole building we don't really have like ah, individual so radiators is... for our apartments oh ah, so this is a magical new experience for you then yeah yes tell me more about these radiator keys on this gaming podcast uh, okay fine well, well I, I was just trying to do some preamble before we we went into our usual business but uh, i guess i guess hardware advice and diy tips is uh, for another podcast so uh, for the half of the world that doesn't have a clue what we've been talking about yeah well i always like to try and teach and educate it just seems to have backfired this time anyway we will move on to what's been played what's been played and uh, you know what, Martin, you've got a game that you've played, probably. So, uh, Probably. Yeah. Oh, you have you? I have. You, have you played a game? I have, but he knows this because it's pretty much only the one game I have been playing lately. Yeah. Which is Star Trek Online. Yeah. No, I, I, I knew that, but it's just a case of winding people in. Uh-huh. So, uh, Good so, old Strek. Yeah, yeah, it's been a little while since I played it last, and since then there's been a couple of updates to it, a couple of new races brought in as playable, and I decided to give the new Discovery side of things a go. Mm-hmm. A uh, little bit disappointed that it was only two or three missions as part of the new stuff, and then it just linked straight back into the core game of the rest. So, in a way, I felt like I could have just carried on with the rest, and because of that, one of my other characters has now fallen to the wayside. Mm. No one needs to I play thought you were gonna, I thought you were going to say my character has fallen to the dark side. Oh, that'd be, that'd be like, that's a, uh, that's wrong a different franchise. star franchise. Yeah, I don't mix those two. Yeah. No, you're one of those people, are you? Mm. I, I do both, but I don't mix them. Uh, ah, so okay. doesn't, doesn't, won't get your peanut get butter out of my chocolate. Them. Oh, peanut butter and chocolate. Yeah. Mm. That's more uh, normally jelly in it and uh, jam. Yeah, Pe- peanut butter jelly uh, sandwiches. Yeah, peanut so... butter jelly time? Peanut butter jelly time? Yes. Where he at? Where he at? <laughs> so yeah, basically most of my time's been in that lately for the last week or two. Um, but I'm now back not far off the point I was with my original main. So it's probably going to end up that the new one will be the one I stick with. Um, not much really, other what than that. What do you to do with Star it. Trek Online for those of us who have never even seen someone else play it? Am I taking that as you being one of those people? Wow, uh, I'm an audience surrogate. Yeah, he Duncan. Um, you know, mine may have not known this before, but Duncan is very, very man on the street. Ask okay. the very questions man on the business. Street. I basically live there. In fact, I'm actually homeless. Oh, God. Cardboard box has good Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had a good microphone, too. Although I stole that one. <laughs> Pretty sure you're not meant to put that on recording. The police can catch you. It's like I say, I say I'm say i an audience surrogate, but I'm also, like, approximately one between one quarter and one tenth of our audience. So, Well, yeah, that Currently. is... Currently. Yeah. I'm more qualified than any of you for this job. <laughs> I demand a raise. 
Yeah, sure, we'll race from zero to zero. In fact, now this is the part where you say, okay, we'll give you 25% raise. Oh, yeah, 25% of zero. Wow, 25%, that's so good. That's yeah. the biggest raise I've ever gotten. Oh, perfect. Well, I was glad I could help in that experience for you. But, um, so yeah. about the Star Trek Online. Yeah, yeah. about that. Um, so you basically take on the role of an up-and-coming cadet to start with and work your way through the ranks uh, in command of a ship and take on ground missions and space missions with themes throughout the franchise. Uh, as I say, in the most recent stuff, it's a couple of missions from around the Discovery show that was out with Netflix. Um, the other recent additions have been bringing the Gem Hadar as a playable race, but again, they've done the same thing with that, where they've just sort of linked it into the main story after an intro. Um, mm-hmm. So the, it's the three main races are the Federation, the Klingons, and the Romulans, who are the main playable races as well. Uh, the main difference between them is that the Federation's more sort of PvE friendly people Klingons are more about the PvP side of things after you hit a certain point and the Romulans have the choice of going one way or the other when you hit a certain level Mm. Um, so it gives you a bit more of a rounded experience on that one Yeah. so you you Um, get a choice between the light side and the dark side stop mixing (laughs) I want to put my peanut butter all up in that chocolate. Well, okay, fair enough. And this is, so I think, like, it's been mentioned a couple of podcasts ago about the way that sort of the the combat and movement is done on Star Trek, split into space and ground. Yeah, for a, that. a couple of Those are really the only two locations. That. Well, That's... there could have been sky, but there isn't. Yeah, the if you want to mix franchises for a bit the uh recent battlefront mm-hmm. yeah yeah battlefront was uh that one split it very much into some ground combat some space or air combat uh but i was quite disappointed with that game as well because it took out the main feature of the board in the other ships that i quite liked from the original pc version mm. it also took out a lot of stuff like uh uh, playable content. Yeah, well, they hid some of it behind paywalls. Hmm. Oh, this, this was before. This was before Battlefront Two and its loot box bollocks. It's just there was just nothing in. But I mean, by the time the season pass stuff came out for Battlefront One, you had one game. It should have been one and a half games, but no. That's that's just EA. Mm, yeah. I remember when like you bought a game and like I, I sound like super old man here. Just, mm. But you know, video game podcast. I remember Back when you bought a game and like, like you had a game, like like the whole game, Not like everything that you and then pay for more. Yeah, well, it's like everything that you could possibly ever experience within that game was in that cartridge or disc that you bought mm. or key. If you know, if you know, if you're going Steam games or whatever. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like you know, maybe there'd be like a sequel or an expansion pack, or maybe you'd have to have an internet connection to access the online portion but it's like the game was there everything that you needed to play it was there mm. it actually kind of blows my mind you know like let, you know people are like up and down on games like on blizzard activision as a company and games like overwatch for example it blows my mind that a game like overwatch where it's like okay you know you can go out of their loot boxes and cosmetics and all that shit but like the game is there you buy a copy of overwatch you have all of the playable content of overwatch like yeah. forever it blows my mind that a game like that exists and is owned by a game like Blizzard, of all people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a bit like League of Legends when we used to play that one. Uh, you had everything you needed to start with and they rotated the characters out so you could eventually experience them all without buying anything. Mm. Yeah, and, you know, and sure, you could buy characters in that game, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you buying a character without. didn't... Yeah, you could get by without, and buying a character didn't necessarily mean, like, you progressed in the game, you know, it's like, you still had to learn how to play the character, and mm. maybe you found out that you sucked with them after you played them for a while. Yeah, like, about 90% of the roster with me, that was, a. Uh... That's why I liked the free-to-play rotation, because it gave you the chance to try it before you bought into it and realized that you sucked with it. Yeah. Yeah, and if you were a big fan of the ARAMs, like we were, uh, then, uh... That, that. And it really didn't. Then it didn't really matter what character you liked or what characters you mained because you're just gonna get a random guy anyway. 
Yeah, so it gave you, gave you the option to just, you know, work on trying to master all of them, or at least be comfortable with most of them. I always so liked the odd pairings, mm. um, rather than going with the meta games at the time, which back when I was last playing, it was sort of a AD carry and support bottom lane. Mm. Whereas quite regularly, me and Ryan used to take two mage type characters in the bottom lane, and because nobody was expecting it, we did quite well with it. Oh, I miss the days of New Ghana. Nobody expects the Magic Inquisition. Mm-hmm. They, they, they really didn't. Oh, look, top lane, top lane bruiser AD tank style. Oh, he's on there. Yeah, he can take some damage, but not in massive bursts early game, and that's what kills him. But, you know. Top lane early game was always so boring in, like, a typical meta setting. Oh, this is, like, uh, two tanks with in with invincible armor who can't hurt each other. Uh, they're All they're doing is punching minions and occasionally slapping each other. Yeah, that, well, that being said, with the ECS and the, and the LCS... Um, it's still the same, really. Top laners just sit there and do what they do. All the actions on the bottom two thirds of the map, really. But anyway, that's that's the thing. So, so we've we've had some Star Trekky stuff and digressions. Duncan, what have you been on? Uh oh, I haven't thought it this far ahead. Oh, well, that's not good. What the hell have I been playing? Uh, man, I've sure been playing a lot of Dota 2, but uh, no, actually, okay. Uh, I can go on this without repeating myself. Yeah, <clears throat> Monster Prom. I don't think I've talked about Monster Prom. I've played it since we started doing this, but I don't, don't know if we've talked about it. No, we we haven't. At least it's, it's certainly not on the podcast sense, anyway. So Monster Prom is a game you can buy on Steam. It's a game that my sister showed me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, it's kind of like a it's basically like a fucked up uh, dating sim, which is exactly what I say in the beginning of the video that we recorded in it. Oh yeah. Get back to that later. Mm-hmm. Little teaser at the beginning, uh, but uh, basically it's like just sort of a comedic twist on like typical like anime style uh, dating sims, except it's like all monsters and like cr- weird creatures, and demons and shit dating mm. each other in a high school setting. It's it's a high school setting, but most of the characters are like in their twenties, so it's like I don't really know what's going on. Oh, These people so obviously more. are not very academically motivated. No. No, and, I've, and like I say, I've been seeing some of the, or well, some of the run-throughs on that. It's it's an odd little game, but I do like the fact that it's got this, well, you can probably explain a little bit more on this, that it's got this weird multiplayer aspect and party game aspect that you can put into it. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very odd game because it's a multi, you can play it single player or you can play it multiplayer, and, but what makes it the multiplayer interesting to me is that it's not really competitive or cooperative. It's I've never really seen this in a in a multiplayer game before. It's a completely parallel game. Like mm. you and your other companions are essentially playing your own parallel game just within the same world. And there there are certain ways that other people can affect each other. Like for example, uh you know, one player cannot go visit an area that another player has chosen to visit for the day for whatever reason, like whether mm. you're going to a certain f- classroom or facility to upgrade a certain stat, another player can't go there, or during lunchtime, if you try to decide to sit at one table to try and woo or one of your romantic interests, the other person can't sit there, which is usually not a problem unless they're sitting at the same table, you know, mm. your, pers- your romantic interest. Yeah. So it's like, but other than that, like, other than those minor elements, they're largely concurrent parallel games that don't really interact with each other heavily. And, like, there's really no rules as to, like, who is allowed to win and who is allowed to lose. Everyone can independently win or lose their own storyline, irregardless of the performance of anyone else. Yeah. And that's... Yeah, it's, it's, that sounds... You see, that sort of interests me, because I'm not, I'm not usually... I've, I've done visual novels before. You know, when when at its core, Ace Attorney is a visual novel with point-and-click adventure elements in it, yeah, uh, and and stuff like that. The dating sim has never really grasped me. There has there's been some like sort of odd ones like Doki Doki Literature Club, which was a horror game. <laughs> that's a yeah, visual that was novel. a very interesting one. You know, masquerading as a dating sim, so you know, it's, it's a bit odd. Yeah, but, and it's yeah. funny that I'm like applying this like super like, oh, I make it sound like such an interesting and unique game, and you know, I. It, it almost sounds like too fancy for what it is. Mm. I mean, at its core, it is a fundamentally comedic, bizarre, crass, rude, vulgar game. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, like I say, I mean, we'll we'll go on this. Like, Duncan has recorded a a complete run. Yes, me and my sister, my my little sister Andrea, have recorded a approximately two hour long full game of the game, which, <laughs> funny enough, is estimated supposed to be sixty minutes. We yeah. managed to double that. Yeah, that's that's because of of the of the good way of like going through a visual novel of narrating every voice. Yes, I voice almost every character in the game, with one exception. Yeah, that kind of caught me off guard that one of, of one of those characters, especially because of being the fact that I'm sort of helping out on the on the on the editing side of this. Um, and part of it is we just needing to do a um, an audio script through just to make sure everything's all on the level there. But yeah, because for some yeah. reason the the character voices were like ridiculously loud compared to all the rest of the audio. We're not yeah. really sure what caused that, but I'll be more mindful of that next time. Yeah. But but it'll, it'll you know it'll be fine. We'll we'll get through it. Yeah, we're um, fixing that. Yeah, we'll get that on there because I'm I'm gonna say now I'm I don't, I don't I'm not usually one to well to to sit there and hype stuff up. But I'm telling you, there's, there's of the two hours and like two hours and eleven minutes in on there. Um, it's pretty much gold all the way through, and I think a lot of that comes from the writing of the game as well. Yeah, no, I, for sure. It's a it's a very funny game. Uh, mm. It definitely creates a lot of opportunities for. For riffing and just just building upon itself, it's it's a really it's a well it's a clever game. Yeah. See, so yeah, I'm still a bit hung up on this uh, dodgy multiplayer aspect. Yeah, it's so for me. If you're going to play multiplayer, you want to be playing with the people you're playing with, or you might as well play single player. Well, it it does have something in that, doesn't it? It has um the it challenges. Have, yeah, it does have certain aspects. Like for example, like there is like. Like the the, like I said, you can't go to an area that another player has gone to for that day, and mm. every at the beginning of every day, you you have to choose a new order for the characters to go in, and this is actually kind of one of the more fun aspects. It kind of it's very like Cards Against Humanity esque, mm. where um, the turn order is decided by honor vote uh, based on who like like they'll give you a prompt like say name a something that's good name name a video game name a, a, a name a type of animal things like that whatever they'll give you a prompt without context you pick one say it out loud let everyone know what it is and then they'll give you like the context of that prompt later like turn in order is based on uh how weird it would be if that animal that you picked became an anthropomorphic version of itself and was now your best friend forever or something like that Mm -hmm. and you have to like discuss amongst yourself like and and vote through honor like what (laughs) what you really do think was the best or worst answer and that's your turn order and if Mm -hmm. you don't like that then you can go with a random order or if you can't come to a conclusion you can do a random order yeah, and that's just one to, to look on that. The very first one that you you and Andrea had there with them, um, just um, was it choosing an object, and it was between can and sand, and can I'm not going to explain what the prompt was that they needed to, to do turn under by, but yeah, it throws it completely for a loop and brings out hilarious results. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's great because it's like it's not a game that relies exclusively on its comedic writing. You know, like it encourages you to be just as ridiculous and goofy as the game is being, which is I think part of what makes it so fun. Like mm. you know, a game like like for example the 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 Stanley Parable or like um, what's another one, Man- Manual Samuel or something like somewhere like the 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 narrative of the game is very funny, but like that's really all, that's all you got. Like mm. it is in itself a very odd game, and it makes you say and do very odd things along with it. So you're laughing both with it and at it. <laughs> yeah, and that's then that, you know that looks that you know it's it's fun, you know, and then combine it with everything else, you know, your visual novel stuff, is, you know, good art and, and and little voice clips and stuff like that, and it just sounds like it's a a game that's that's enjoyable. Like I say, it's not. I've I've watched visual novels being played like that but yeah it's a it's a different sort of sort of game so thank you for letting us know about that i uh, i very much hurt myself voicing uh my uh my character's main love interest damien who is uh, oh. <laughs> who is uh, literally the son of satan uh so i <laughs> so i went with a very demonic sort of like how you doing kind of gravelly kind of thing like yeah for that voice you, you doing that for 
being my main interest, you know, doing that for two hours is uh, it's a little yeah, rough. Yeah, I mean, you, you said you had the idea that you sounded like Crow from from Ruby. I definitely felt a very old Snake vibe from Metal Gear Solid on that, just like Metal Gear. You know, I can't do that because I'm not got, I've not got enough gravel in my diet. So you gotta eat some more stones, man. Yeah, yeah. Would, would we go with flags or just, you know, just like, just go, just go straight in with the gravel. Yeah, but yeah, that's uh, so yeah, that's a fun game. That's what I've been doing lately, and uh, we uh, hopefully have a video of that coming out for the channel, or a series of videos rather, because it's, it's maybe a one two-hour video is not doing the thing. No, no, that can definitely get split up. But um, yeah, no, that that will be that will be happening. Like I say, we're having sort of success on the audio side, so we'll get that uh, we'll get that out soon. Now, uh, speaking of hype trains, I spent the week now finally being able to play Anthem. Anthem. Good old Destiny Light. Uh, by Diet Destiny. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, EA and Bioware in their attempt to try and show us that they're not, they didn't just have lightning in a bottle, and that they actually are a good developer, um, brought out this third-person shooter with story elements. Uh, set in a wonderfully nice planet with beautiful waterfalls and and flora and fauna and everything's all great and you are tasked as a freelancer a guy that rides around in a tiny little mobile mech suit called a javelin and you go around and you try and save the world as you do in bioware games with little bits of hmm? saving the world yeah always with you know little bits of conversation in between to help guide the story but not very Mass Effect like and it doesn't make massive weighted choices. The game sort of just runs through this time. Um and you can just make sort of binary choices, which is a little bit weak on Bioware's part. But the, the gameplay is solid, third person, with you variety of guns and and grenades and gear to you know to customize your character a little bit. They all fly around. It's very mobile, a lot of verticality and in where you where you're going and shooting stuff and finding nice bits of cover, you know we're using good old shields and health systems as well, so everything's all good on that side. Um, yeah, it was, is it is it was it like Titanfall kind of thing with the um, verticality or kind of yeah. I mean it's not got wall running in there, but all the javelins have jetpack boosters on the back so they can fly around. You can hover. You can sort of you know swim in these suits. It's all designed on the theme of the game, which is that. Uh, the world basically hates everyone, and the world just randomly does something called the Anthem of Creation, which causes random stuff to happen on this planet that people are living on, from turning the gravity of waterfalls upside down to uh, creating earthquakes underneath people's feet, just because it can. Hmm, interesting. So, yeah, it's nice. kind of reminds nice. me of a, a Star Wars novella that I read once where they... They landed on a planet that was alive and actively trying to eat everyone that got on it. Hmm. Nice. Just a just Very, a, a, hung, a hungry planet. Yes, it's a hungry planet. Sometimes it'll just straight up open up holes in the ground to just consume people. Yeah. Nah, that's good. But uh, yeah, the the I would have probably talked about it properly last week when it came out on a, a little early access thing. Yeah, I know. Judge me later. I said I wasn't going to do anything with that, but still. But uh, yeah, traitor. Yeah. Early yeah. accessor. Eh, it was Origin Access. What can you do? It was the it was the only one on the the board of how to play Anthem that you know you could play it. But um, I spent most of my time during that early access period looking at loading screens because my God. I was gonna ask you. I I had heard tell of some excuse me uh, some god awful loading times during its early stages. Yeah. Um. I mean, part Are of those... this. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say part of this turned out was the problem of one of my hard drives. Apparently, it's just got a um, a god awful read write speed. Um, so that caused loading screens to load from logging in to getting in for Tarsis, which is the the hub. Took two and a half minutes to load. Um, you'd then try and go out into the world, and because the game tries to load the entire world at once, uh, that took four and a half minutes. That's a lot of writing. Yeah. Have, uh, have they fixed any of these loading issues? I thought, yeah, I, heard, so, I thought I read an article somewhere that said that they yeah. were patching that. So, yeah, I mean, Steph brought it up as well on there. But, um, yeah, on the their day one patch, which I would actually call their day seven patch, because, sorry, early access, that's when the date, that's when the game came out. But, um, yeah, they, they managed to reduce that drastically. <coughs> um, mainly to the point now that 
and and moving it onto my other hard drive has changed from two and a half minutes to thirty seconds, which is now on par with the loading times of Destiny. When you know they want to compare it to that, I'll compare it to that. Um, well, you did start Dest- this thing comparing it to Destiny. It was like the first sentence of the whole uh, of your conversation yeah. wasn't comparing it to Destiny. So, well, I mean, this this was supposed to be Bioware and EA's idea of a um, of a Destiny killer, anyway. So. You know? Destiny killer. Yeah. Don't kill it's, Destiny. You need that. Yeah, we do. We always want Destiny. We'd never want the Destiny song by Paul McCartney though. That was awful. Anyway, yeah. Um, loading times are now much better, and yeah, so far good. Good gameplay loop. Uh, characters. Some of them are all right. Some of them are just absolutely irrelevant. Um, but yeah, it's not as bad as people are claiming it to be. But it's certainly not as good as EA and. Bioware want it to be, um, but they have done a 90-day roadmap on how they're going to improve their live service, not game, live service, they said it themselves, um, but yeah, we'll see, see how it goes, but so far, so good, having having fun with that. Excellent. So I remember when I used to be able to afford to play games, and I and I, and I like did that as also, mm. Me, a lot of my games are either free games, games I bought on sale, or just cheapy little things that someone showed me once. Yeah, if if I would ever suggest anything, maybe sort of a lot of this stuff now, I'm not needing to buy the big big games. I mean, the honestly, the fact the fact that I've gotten that with um with Anthem, so I didn't spend the inordinate, you know, the absolutely absurd eighty pounds for the edition. I just basically got got it as part as Origin Access, Willoughby, which I already had. That's so eighty pounds. That's like five hundred Canadian dollars. Hey, we've not had one of them jokes for a while. Yeah, yeah. As I say, you joke know, is probably actually that bad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, to give you a financial update. Ah, uh, oh, perfect business with Duncan. Here we go. Canada, Canada dollar recently did have a, a minor little surge, up like half a percent, uh, due to uh, a little bit of a bump in the the oil prices, which is a large determiner of the value of our dollar because we export a lot of oil from Alberta. But mm. uh, yeah, we're currently forecasted to hit 15-year lows within uh, the next few months, so looking forward to that. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, March 29th, everything will change for us. We'll oh, just is, that, is, that the, uh, is that the Brexit thing? Yeah, and uh, the way the way it's going, it's just going to be an absolute problem. But uh, hey, So we've, we've had DIY and politics on this gaming-focused podcast again. Mm. I, and you know, as much as I like to always have a, a joke about Brexit, it's, it's depressing and I don't really... No, really want to yeah. do that. The economy is a great big game, anyway. Yeah, it counts. I mean, the whole point of the gaming is meant to be an escape from all the all the crap, isn't it? So let's uh, let's try and you know shake that out of our head and actually look at some shake it off. S- oh, really? You just Taylor Swifted this podcast? I want to Taylor Swift every podcast. <laughs> Taylor Swift <laughs> is pretty. Hey, be careful, you'll end up in a relationship and then you will be in some rough riding, my friend. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Yeah? Okay. I have been told I look like Ed Sheeran. I don't know what that means, but maybe it means I have a shot. It means you have a ginger beard and hair. Do you wear... And, and you can get some, like, like spectacles. You know? Also, it means Ryan doesn't like you anymore. It... I, it's it's a shame, Duncan. We we, we have to we have to put this off like this. this. You look perfect tonight. <sighs> that's that's gonna kill me. That's gonna kill me. Right. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we will get to. I'm in love uh, with the shape of you. Oh, cheers. I so like news, a, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. News. News time. Just to fill the blank space. Oh. Great, between Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift, we're ending up into... I'm I'm disappointed, and, and a lot of it is not just because, you know, years of making the Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift puns, it's because I've not thought of them first. It mm. it upsets it's a me. Bit of a, it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a curveball. Mm. Nobody expects the Taylor Swift uh, Ed Sheeran Inquisition. No, no, we really don't. So, anyway, yes, like you, like you said, news time. So, we'll start off with this... Uh, this this tiny insignificant game that no one's ever played called Apex Legends. Oh god, I don't have this article up. Uh, Apex, where as Apex? Yeah. Appendix. I, when I was Appendix looking Legends. at it before, I didn't really see it much as a conversation about the game itself, more about anti-cheating. Yeah, 
but it's 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 something to 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 consider, and it probably shows that this wasn't expecting to be as popular as it was, really. Yeah, because it nearly broke it when it went online. Yeah, basically. So, Apex Legends nearly uh, broke it once it got online. Are you sure you're not talking about Fallout seventy <laughs> six? No, 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 no. We don't do that. Oh, there is How a many tiny days it's been? um reset to zero. Yeah, a very yeah, quick yeah. one. I've not got it on the. I've not got it on the um, on the news feed, but Jim Sterling and Sid Alpha and a bunch of other commentators um, heard about this Reddit post from a player who's been playing who had played the game for 900 hours. I, I didn't realise there was 900 hours worth of content in there to play. And they pretend they've got a life, I presume. Uh, probably, probably. Um, but they they got banned by Bethesda for apparently carrying too much ammo. Too much ammo. Yeah, turns out they may have found a flaw in how Bethesda's games read um, read the picking up of items. Um, rather than it complaining that someone's got too much ammo, it's that their character has picked up so many ammo drops. Not helped by the fact that the guy's got two accounts, so he just swaps ammo between him and his other character. But because that's a counter and it keeps flagging it up one by one, um, the servers decided, you must be cheating, and basically banned him from the game. So, uh, so yeah. now we can go out and actually yeah, get I, a life. I, I think I already scrolled past that article once when I was reading the news. So it's just like shaking my yeah. head, you know, SMH, yeah. just like, ugh. Yeah, so, so Bethesda, well done. I mean, if it turns out that he was lying and he was actually, you know, duping Gamo, then, then so be it. 900 well, hours. Yeah. I think yeah. the only game I've played that has anything close to that is Gems of War, and I've been playing that for about 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his gems have had children the amount of time that he's been playing that. But uh, anyway, still, uh, digressions aside, respawn, who didn't make, uh, who made Titanfall and didn't uh, do put wall running into Apex Legends. We've got to remember that this game was just dropped on people three weeks ago, three four weeks ago. There was no announcement; it just happened. No one knew they were even making it, and it's become massively popular, mainly due to sort of the old, uh, the old. Classics of cultural significance, fun gameplay, and you know, shooty shooty stuff. But what it's was the number it said on the bottom logged on in the first. So um, yeah, twenty five million people, according to this game, um, this Eurogamer article um, that Martin's just uh, you know pointed me towards there that Respawn has said twenty five million logons in a week. That's, uh, that's the nearly breaking it. Wait, 25 million logons, uh, that's a little different from 25 million players. Well, well so they say 25 I mean, million I, people, but... I mean, if they, I, can, if they can verify 25 million independent, like, indiv- like, indi- like individual IP, you know, signatures, that's mm. one thing. Uh, it's, you know, 25 million logons, I mean, I can log on to the same game two or three times in a day, depending on how I feel. Yeah, that's true, but... It's still quite a significant and I had, number. And it's not mean there's three of me, unless there yeah. is, in which case, uh, help. <laughs> yeah, we'll f- we'll find your clones and hunt them down. I only have one knife. I can I can't fight them all. Oh no, not the knife. <laughs> but um, yeah, mine mine says that consider taking still take into account that there was one week. That is yeah. still quite a significant number, and no wonder it broke if they weren't planning on it being so popular. Yeah, well, you Which... say there was made by the people who made Titanfall, right? Yeah. Yeah, I bet but... Titanfall wish it had twenty five million people playing it. Hey, um, but. Yeah, the, it's the fact that they came out with their, you know, sort of their subreddit. The community manager had explained that they've already had to ban sixteen thousand accounts from the game. Now, people are discussing, oh, well, that that just shows that it's a poorly coded game and stuff like that. It's like, well, maybe. I mean, or apparently, maybe I just, there's a, maybe there's a lot of people who are just kind of assholes, you know. Yeah, it just turns out there's just the people who, in their whole point of either needing to be desperate to win and not going the old classic way of, you know, patience and practice and stuff like that and just wanting to cheat their way through and it makes them feel better, or just people who just want to troll. For me, the games, uh, I think Command and Conquer, one of them, did it quite well. Um, in your single-player mode, you could do what you wanted, you could cheat all you liked. Hmm. The second you took it online, all those cheats were removed from the playthrough and you were on an even footing for being online. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's it's just a, a thing. I mean, yeah, cheat all you want in a single-player game. You're not affecting anyone else. You're having your own fun. And, you know, again, that's what the games are supposed to be about. It's supposed to be 
fun. When you're in a multiplayer aspect, it's meant to be fun for everyone as much as possible. Yeah, I couldn't tell you any more, but back on um, Red Alert, I had half of those sheets memorised for playing on my own. (laughs) Didn't even have to look at the sheets for what I wanted because it was the same four or five things you wanted every time, so it just come naturally to you, but then you take it online and I suppose that's where it comes in for people that do do it is when you do take it online after that, you're so used to having it that you struggle without it. Mm. And then they think, well, maybe I won't get caught, maybe it'll just catch me up to everyone else, whatever. And that's potentially a portion of it. So when we used to play Conquer, we had that mod suite over it mm. that basically showed us up the items that were worth picking up. Yeah. So we didn't have to pick up all the junk. Mm. That was also coded in a way, though, that you could just um, Photoshop texture packs, and then they would show up a little bit differently in the game, though, as well. Yeah. Like I remember, I remember my meteors and dragon balls all going rainbow coloured very, very, very quickly because of the way that you could just change the colours on the animations. But that was the thing to me that, although it is modifying and cheating, didn't strike me as a bad thing because all it was doing was changing the colour of something to mm. notify you of something. Yeah. Whereas if you are doing it to the point that you're causing drops of items that shouldn't be dropping in a mm. multiplayer game, then that is a problem. Yeah. I mean, on the same side, we conquer on that. The way that the people cheated on that was that... And it was it showed for the code. But I mean, it's an old game now. But when a character jumped from one place to the other, on the screen, it would show the animation of you jumping from one place to the other. On the game's server side, you had already moved over to that point. So one of the, the hacks on it was that someone could just set an aimbot on the on the game that would know where yeah. you've already landed, send the send the attack, and uh, you would die. And people got away with that all the time until they decided if you got some money, they'll just put your account in the jail and you'd have to pay real money to get it unbanned. But, you know, cheaters. Multiplayer cheaters, you're assholes. Single-player cheaters, go nuts. Yeah, no kidding, eh? Power overwhelming, black sheep wall. Show me the money. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So, um, you know how we were talking about Bethesda and dropping the counter before? Uh, uh yep. Yeah, slight slight bit of news that uh, it looks like uh, Amazon had got a whole load of mystery placeovers for Bethesda products on their uh, on their store. Um, all the countdown timers have already gone, so it just looks like Bethesda had just bought placeholder parts in the store for games that may or may not come out. But that doesn't stop people um, playing the good old game of... Oh, what do we know that we don't know yet? I actually clicked one of the links in that article that takes you to the top however many games that supposedly covers it. Yeah. And it's not there either anymore. Uh, so they've, so so they've every already... every trace of it has been pulled. Yeah. But it, it, led, it led to people uh, speculating. There we go. The good old speculation game of, of what Bethesda could be releasing now, considering Fallout 76 flopped. It bombed. It nuclear bombed. It's been irradiated. Yeah. And is now being mauled by uh, ghouls. That's the one. Yeah. So the the hints were for another Fallout version of some sort, or for Wolfenstein. Yeah. Neither of which I've bothered with. So Fallout mm. seventy six point one. Fallout seventy six Game of the Year edition. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward silence aside, we all know that that's not happening. Well, actually. I, w- I we- wonder if they'll have uh they'll they'll have like canvas bags. This time, yeah, they'll have well, those ready. This time, it'll be, it'll be game of the year edition, supplied with all the nylon bags that were returned. <laughs> but uh, yeah, troll. Yeah, so that was just a that was just a quick, a quick uh, um, Bethesda article. But then our other, the the other big news and the last bit of news I want to go through this week is uh, the retirement of Nintendo of America's stalwart marketing man, the guy that. You know, helped sell the Wii Fit board to homes around the country and the, the world. The person that's had Ryan giving me funny looks for the last hour because I called him some dude that's retiring. Yeah, Reggie, Reggie fees me. Good old Reggie from Nintendo of America announced his uh, retirement on Wednesday last week. My body is not ready for this. Yeah. When I was looking at that, the only thing I kept coming back to was the name of his replacement. Yeah. So we we will definitely get there. So he's a. Uh, Reggie is retiring in spring and will be taking his experience to to the nice holiday home that he will probably be chilling in with all that well-deserved money that he's got. And uh, yeah, he's now being replaced by a new COO, uh, 
Doug Bowser, please. So Get all your like Bowser his... jokes out of the way. Uh, don't give him a super crown. Uh, the one that's all over the article is Bowser is now finally in control of the Mushroom Kingdom. Nice, nice. Uh, like the one that I heard on Twitter recently, which is, feel sorry for all those Nintendo of America people who've now got to get 76 stars before they even have the right to knock on his door. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. God, he's been around forever. I remember him sitting there waggling the, the Wii motion controller to, you know. By forever, he means 13 years. 13 years is forever. See, I didn't know who the guy was until about an hour ago. Yes. He's the only, uh, I could say he's probably the only, uh, like, video game, like, uh, I, I don't know, like, like corporate entity person, I don't, uh, businessman, guy? Yeah, yeah, so, so, so the who corporate is, who, things, rather than, yeah. rather than the creative talent that I'd you would he's, normally he's know. He's the only one person of his kind where, you know, he's, people know him by his first name, you know? Yeah. yeah that's a very rare thing. You know, you might yeah. know uh, Shigeru Miyamoto here and there, or... Things like say, but things like that, but like you know, it's Reggie. You know, it's, I don't even know he had a last name. It's just Reggie. Yeah, Reggie. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most more surprising. Oh wait, Fizami, that's his actual uh, his surname. I thought that was just some sort of like thing that they said to him. Ah, oh, Reggie, Fizami. Um, no, it's, it's it's not. That's that's his actual name. But I know we're, we're talking more about him retiring than the guy taking over. Mm-hmm. But did either of you see that what's going on in the background on the picture on the article we saw? Uh, of, no. of near the bottom of when he first joined the company. No. Uh, uh, he seems to have Mario and Luigi tied up. Yep. Oh and my god. The, uh, and all the bad guys are just kind of hanging out. Oh. I When I saw the picture, I didn't notice it, but because I read the article fully, they do mention it in the article itself, but I've quite liked that touch. Yeah, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the tweet afterwards because I've, I've just checked it on Twitter now, and yeah, so he's got the... You know, thank you for the warm welcome stand. And yeah, there's the Mario and Luigi tied up in the background. See now just all the responses afterwards. Like, why did he tie up Mario and Luigi? What's he doing with them? I was like, well, he's, he seems to have decided to embrace the fact that his surname is Bowser. Which, for me, is the that thing his I actual... Thought, sorry, yeah, no. it is his actual name. I was going to say, was like, did he have that legally changed? or something No, like that? from what I saw on it, it was his name originally. Um, but what I quite like about that is the reason that this retiring Reggie is so known by his first name and by what he's done is because he has a very different and personal spin on things. Mm-hmm. If this guy's been effectively trained by the guy that's doing all this yeah. and was like that to start with, potentially he'll still have that streak and bring that through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Which is a good sign. Yeah. yeah. It's always scary when, you know... Someone that you like is being replaced by someone else in the, you know, in the business or, you know, in, in any spotlight position. But, you know, if uh, the guy coming after him seems like they got a good head on their shoulders and know what they're up to, hey. Yeah. One of the comments off him was how he's enjoyed being the Reggie guy's protege sort of thing and being mentored by him. Mm. So if he's been properly mentored to take his place, then hopefully he'll have a very similar style for everybody that liked the style. Yeah, and that's sort of this very, very Nintendo y style of sort of. I don't think there's many companies out there who are upfront with what they do and yet do it in an entertaining way. I mean, especially, you know, something that could be really corporate or should really be corporate like their Nintendo Direct, very business like, right, this is what's coming out and this is what we're doing. All turned into very, you know, active things. Like they did they did a Nintendo Direct where they had handcrafted every member of Nintendo of America and Nintendo of Japan as puppets. It's, hmm. it's odd. There was some mention in the article of a puppet of him, um, yeah. and I think it was one of the comments actually rather than the article itself. Um, and they were saying that for that person individually who went and saw that, um, there will be no gaming moment like that again. Mm. Yeah, it was it was just it was just massive. The very like you say, they're just sort of very involved in making it sort of st- stuff like that enjoyable for people. So you know, if we compare you know Reggie Fimi and the you know like you say all the all the rest to to assholes like Bobby Kotick, he's the Nintendo uh, not Nintendo, he's the Activision CEO and an absolute. Well, he's a suit, and that's it. So is it this point I'm supposed to worry you both? Oh, Bowser. Yeah. Worked for EA. Oh no. <sighs> His previous role was a, a similar role in EA, from what I saw. 
and that was one of the other comments on it that they were worrying that it'll go the same way. Oh no. Doug Bowser, is your body ready? His body better be ready because with that with that bombshell we're gonna we're gonna wrap this podcast up. Um, so very ominous. Yeah, we'll just leave That's it. That's a that. fucking we'll... cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> say, proper, not use, pro- not, don't usually have those on a podcast. No, no. So um, you know, I'm sort of happy we managed to naturally get to that point. It's great. So um, yeah, if you if you enjoyed this this uh, this journey through you know all in, sorts, yeah, all sorts from from DIY to politics. To, to loading screens, to bombshells involving formula, uh, formula, former jobs of um, of the, the you know King Cooper, uh, to popular yeah. uh, musicians and bad covers of them. Yeah, yeah. From from all that, if you enjoyed all that, please do the likey, sharey, subscribey thing with the bell if you're listening to this on YouTube. Um, speaking of that, yeah, I'm gonna try and make that a little bit more. The videos are that a little bit more active. Um, last podcast have actually started changing the titles around so it actually shows what we're talking about rather than just a static image all the way through um so i'll be looking at doing that a little bit more on you know going forward um for those who want to watch the video for those who want to just listen to it we're still there on on apple podcast and the rss feed and all that business and uh yeah we'll we'll keep we'll keep doing some videos we'll uh, get hard at work on getting that uh monster prom thing sorted because i think that's going to be hilarious to uh to watch and uh yeah until until next time thank you very much martin all right and duncan no problem and uh until next week please don't kill each other and uh, we'll see you next time Bye-bye. goodbye <laughs>